And today I'm going to detail how the silkworm proteolytic enzyme seropeptase and the earthworm proteolytic enzyme lumbrokinase both support the heart. And the best way to do that is to first examine the pathogenesis of heart disease. Heart disease develops primarily from abnormalities in the vascular endothelium, which is the inner lining of veins, arteries, and capillaries. These abnormalities are known specifically as endothelial dysfunction, and it develops from a deficiency of nitric oxide inside the blood vessel walls, which otherwise would promote optimal vasodilation. Endothelial dysfunction always precedes the accumulation of arterial plaque known as atherosclerosis, and a large culprit behind this is lipopolysaccharide-induced vascular inflammation. Lipopolysaccharides are normally housed safely in the gut. However, during an infection, any degree of intestinal permeability or leaky gut syndrome, or even in someone who consistently eats a diet of primarily processed food, these lipopolysaccharides are pro-inflammatory and can enter the bloodstream and contribute heavily to, first, excess clotting, also known as thrombosis, and eventually, vascular inflammation. The interaction between thrombosis and excess inflammation leads to the creation of micro blood clots, which contribute to organ dysfunction. And it isn't difficult to see how this happens, because while lipopolysaccharides can affect a variety of cells, they are particularly damaging to the endothelial cells that serve as a bridge between the blood flow and the vessel wall. Now that you understand how vascular endothelium irregularities can lead to heart disease, let's look at how the silkworm proteolytic enzyme seropeptase directly combats the development of these abnormalities. Seropeptase significantly reduces the lipopolysaccharide-induced vascular inflammation and oxidative stress, primarily by inhibiting lipopolysaccharide production of the heavily inflammatory cytokines interleukin-2, interleukin-1, interleukin-6, tumor necrosis factor alpha, and especially monocyte chemoattractive protein 1, which is itself a primary initiator of inflammation. Seropeptase also dissolves the excessive fibrin that distinguishes clots and any existing scar tissue and also breaks down the lipopolysaccharide production of biofilms. Lumbrokinase, which is sourced from earthworms, is also unrivaled in its clot-busting capacity, specifically because lumbrokinase converts the abundant plasma protein plasminogen into its proteolytically active form plasmin which is one of the body's primary enzymatic methods for dissolving blood clots. And lumbrokinase does this by increasing the activity of the endothelial cell-produced tissue plasminogen activator. But lumbrokinase's benefits stretch far beyond blood clots. Lumbrokinase also activates the metabolic protein sirtuin-1 in the endothelium and vascular smooth muscle, and sirtuin-1, then, plays a protective role in vascular aging, primarily by stimulating critical antioxidant enzymes like manganese-dependent superoxide dismutase and catalase, which are both necessary for combating the oxidative stress of lipopolysaccharides and even the general overall rise in oxidative stress from the aging process. Lumbrokinase also reduces fibrinogen, which thus decreases the inflammatory response. One heart condition where lumbrokinase can be especially helpful is in a case of angina, which is primarily chest pain stemming from severely reduced blood flow to the heart. Angina is a symptom of coronary artery disease, which is accordingly a narrowing and or blockage of the arteries that directly supply the heart, primarily due to plaque accumulation on the inner walls of these critical arteries. Because fibrin is a structural component of arterial plaque, along with cholesterol, cellular waste, and calcium, regular use of lumbrokinase and seropeptase can reduce heart muscle damage and also the subsequent scarring, known as fibrosis, of cardiac tissue. Remember that both seropeptase and lumbrokinase are not measured in milligrams, but rather units of potency. Also, as therapeutic enzymes, you need to take seropeptase and lumbrokinase on an empty stomach, which means at least two hours after a meal or one hour before. And for the very best results, for the heart and elsewhere, you really should use lumbrokinase and seropeptase regularly. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzymental. Stay healthy.